Are, are you a songwriter? Are, are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorantos. Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to The Songwriter Show right here on Reality Radio 101. I'm your host, Sorantos, a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words mean the world to me, and that's why I'm so thrilled to host this show for you every single Tuesday evening. I believe that every song is a story. Tonight, I'm really excited to have John Dorsch on the show. A little bit about John. As a teenager, he used pennies to slow down his vinyl records to try to get that sound. This led him to be a fan of Van Halen, Led Zeppelin, Rush, The Beatles, and fast forward after 45 years of electric, acoustic guitar and drum playing, his passion for music has expanded to include the finger style guitar. He's inspired by mentor Tommy Emanuel, he's been exposed to Jerry Reed and Merle Travis, and the challenge of moving strings to different sound is exhilarating for him and for us. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show, John. How you doing, man? I'm great. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for uh, having me. You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about your guitar playing. It's probably the first thing I want to ask you. Well, it's, it's, it's constantly evolving <laughs> as, as uh, life kind of goes. Um, it started off on an acoustic guitar. I was back in my early teens. Uh, before that, it was accordion and, a, and trumpet and, and uh, things my parents wanted to do. And I, uh, saw a picture of Jimmy Page there and I wanted to play a guitar. So I eventually uh, moved into the electric guitar and played rhythm and lead. And and uh, after, you know, copying note for note and learning the music, you know, by putting pennies on albums, there was no YouTube or tabulature or, or anybody to teach that. I learned by ear. So um, so I developed a good ear out, out of that, which I think is, is really important in music. And that, that's led to learning melodies and singing and um, broadening and, and uh, more in-depth guitar playing into an acoustic side or fingerstyle playing, which carries more melody and, and bass and rhythm all at once. Yeah, absolutely. I personally love that style, and I'm trying to be a multi-instrumentalist, but piano is probably my first instrument, and there's nothing like an instrumentalist that just takes you to another place. We can all pretend on the computer that we play guitar and piano and all these things, but people that just got that skill, it's kind of special to watch them in a live show, to be honest. It's uh, it's it's truly inspirational. Um, I've had that a number of times. There's players that um, they just, they're, they transcend and they, they, they stretch your imagination. Those are the innovators like uh, Eddie Van Hill and um, Jimmy Page. Those are the first ones that they're, they're always pushing the envelope. And that's what, my inspiration came from is the, the leaders. Um, and then I discovered Tommy Emanuel, which is, he's a monster on the guitar and he sings and he plays and he's an entertainer beyond belief. He's got, he's got the whole package. He's like Paul McCartney. Yeah. Paul McCartney is completely different way. Fabulous. And when people have that skill, they really are just fascinated to sit back and watch and admire. And you sound like one of those people, to be honest with you. Well, I'd, I'd be pretty modest to say I'm in this, any, any category with those, those guys. I have played guitar with Tommy, and it's truly awe-inspiring, and he, he brings out the best in everyone around him. I've done two guitar clubs with him, and I, they've really changed my life and my, my outlook on music, and, uh, and, and you know, that filters all the way through your life in many, many avenues. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your role models musically. Do you have like one person that you could just say is up there, number one? Well, uh, you know, even even Paul McCartney's uh, a fa- fabulous guitar player, even though he's most known for um, you know playing piano and playing bass, but his singing ability is is, is a force of nature. Um, you know, when he was with the Beatles, their their synergy was even greater than the four, the sum of the four of them. So, and his songwriting ability. So he, they they all have these different aspects that. They're not just performers, they're writers, they're intuitive, they're constantly learning. That's the same way Tommy Emanuel uh, inspires me. Um, you know, it was really nice to get a, an email. I did uh, the song Fort Hemlock on this on this album, and I sent it to him, and he responded very positively about that. And that, that's reassuring to hear from, you know, someone of greatness that, you know, 
you're on the right track, which is really kind of nice to know because you never really know if you're on the right track. It's just nobody helping you. <laughs> you're just making it up. That's the hard part in all this, especially if you're like a solo artist or is, you know, if you're not with a label, you got nothing to bounce anything off of. And over the last decade, as I've figured out what I'm doing and gotten better and better, it's amazing to me how people that know their stuff, a little change. They're like, hey, change that chord there, or tweak that melody or that lyric. And it really can take a really good song to just a whole other level. There's there's a lot. And that's one thing I've learned with, with songwriting. So I, I guess it develops over over years, like, you know, you, you start with note for note. I was very good at that. Um, people admired me for that. And, you know, I was known for that. I could play everything note for note, you know, learn by ear. But then after a while, that, that isn't enough. I want to I want to play it my own way a little bit. And, and you know, and I, I felt very good about that. So then you start creating your own melodies and your own chord voicings. And all of a sudden you start to see where different melodies can take the same set of chords. And, you know, many songs can, you know, melodies can be transposed over the same sets of choruses. It's a really plastic or elastic kind of a medium you're dealing with. It's very, you know, you can put your own own stamp on things. And that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I really enjoy doing that. Um, it's, it's, it's very fulfilling. I was just going to ask you, how do you feel fulfilled? So it's interesting you just said that. Fulfilled. Um, it's it's the creating of something new. I wanted to create something that was fresh and new, that was you know, that that's my voice. Like I, I you know, it takes a while to hear your own voice, and then it takes another long while to to pull it out and and hear what it says. And it's taken me a little while to do that. And I found the fingerstyle guitar really has helped help me draw that out. You know, singing and playing, doing finger solo was a nemesis for a while. And it was like, you know, your hand would stop when you opened your mouth to sing. And it was, it was, it was like, oh my God, I'm never going to get anywhere with this. But I'm, I'm always for a challenge. And, and, you know, you, you got to go slow and you got to learn the basics. And, you know, if you practice too fast, you end up practicing making those mistakes. And I didn't learn that for a personal bit, but. I've truly learned it now. You, you go slow and you work your melodies out and you hum them through and then you put your words to them. That's how I write my music and I find it it's actually working that way for me very well. Very cool, man. So tell us about this song that we're going to play in a little bit. Okay. Um, the lead song, uh, lead single off the album is called Faith in Me. Um, that, that song um, is an inspirational song. It's kind of like a series of inspirational messages that one could say to themselves or say to their loved one or express desires. It's it's a very kind of generic, captivating song. I wanted to, I didn't want to paint a story or an actor in, in, a, in a story in this song. I wanted it to speak to everybody and they could apply it to their own world. And it's it's a heartfelt song. And it's it's about kind of be who you want to be. Um, it's, it's, it's got a, 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 an interesting feel to the song. Um, I, my wife wanted me to, to take a different approach with this song. I, I'd kind of done it like a, an 80s ballad and um, wasn't entire, entirely happy with it. She thought, why, why don't you just go sideways with the song and use your new resonator guitar. I was playing some blues and slide guitar. And so that's, that's what appears as the main melody of the guitar. I drafted something completely new and let the guitar and, and myself in isolation just let it happen. And that's, that's what happened. And then I uh, decided to put uh, a, a, a dirty electric guitar that that complements it so, um, along with it to drive that, which is a really interesting mix. I, I don't know where it came from. It came organically from inside me as something, something new. I wanted to kind of push the envelope. And that's what this song is about. We also did, my wife and I produced the video. Uh, her name is Danny Barabo. She's my musical partner. And uh, we, we fell into this after we got married. I didn't know she could sing until I, I caught her singing <laughs> behind, behind. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm just going to yell at you because it sounded from what you said earlier that you don't listen to your wife hundred percent of the time. So you're going to, some of our listeners are going to be very mad at you, but you can't do that stuff, man. <laughs> I, I, I listen to my wife now. She's a very, very good editor and a very good confidant. And she can see things that I don't um, automatically see. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, as most good editors, right? So, 
yeah and she's she's um she's very supportive um you know, you know she wants wants me to, to 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 do it my way and and you know get get the best out of my performance and and something that works and then you know we want to come up with some really great harmonies that's another feature of the song um one aspect I really like is harmony vocals. That's because that's what I sang in bands for years was harmony vocal. And then all of a sudden you're the lead singer because you're doing it all yourself. You don't have to rely on other people anymore to sing your songs. You just do them yourself. So, um, which is an interesting uh, perspective change. Absolutely. All right. I'll tell you what, let's take a listen then we'll come back and talk. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Thank you. No problem. All right, everybody check this out. Your heart. 
Well, John, I want to thank you for sharing that with me in the audience tonight. Cool song, man. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a different experience. <laughs> yeah, let's get into your head a little bit. How do you write songs? Lyrics, melody, drum groove, guitar lick? How do you get started? Well, that's, I've, I've tried many uh, different approaches over, over the years, and I, 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 I found it difficult to sit and just, just let it all happen at once. That, that's, that's only happened to me uh, in the song On My Way to Mexico, where I, I woke up in the morning and I could, I could hear the whole song. The whole arrangement and it was then this process of, of pulling it out of my head before i forgot it of course and getting it on my zoom recorder so I, i've learned a bunch of valuable lessons i always have a zoom recorder near me i have my phone so whenever i have lyrics that you know you never would have thought you know like a line or, or anything pops in your head i'm texting myself all the time and then i, I draft them down about once a month into a journal and i've got about three inches of a journal here of, of different lyrics and different ideas um, when they come to me. So I just amass them. And when when a theme kind of kind of fits, I'll look for those lyrics and I'll, I'll take all those parts and I'll look for the theme and the lyrics. The, the theme in elevation was elevation, elevating the human spirit in, in any way possible. Faith in me, you know, um, that's lifting your human spirit, elevation, the title of the, the album. Um, the passage to Perth, you know, the, the elevating of, of people from poverty into the community of Perth, that, that kind of thing. It was all of a it, you know, the theme elevation developed um, kind of organically out of the songs. Kind of go, this, uh, these songs seem to be having some similarity running through them. So, uh, as far as the music seems to come, the melodies come out of the chord pattern. Some chord pattern will inspire me. So I have. Uh, reams of chord patterns in mp3s that i have sitting waiting for me to play them and i'll i'll, I'll document those in a journal as well so so i have i've, I've gotten really good at, at not forgetting anything anymore so i have this this uh an, an array of different songs and styles and I, I have you know the next album pretty much laid out ready to go i just have to actually work all the melodies and actually record it which is a lot of a lot of the, the process but i find humming a melody through the chords and then working the finger style arrangement through that and then um, putting the words to that that melody line works fast for me it seems to work very efficiently actually well i gotta point out a flaw you when you said everything you just said you missed the most important thing which is listening to everything your wife tells you <laughs> you left that out my friend <laughs> And she, she's the one that's sitting there going, I really like that. You know, what, I mean, what if you did this? And what if you did that? <laughs> she does that and constantly steers my ship, and I'm not giving her credit. I should be giving her even more credit. But anyway, yeah, she's, uh, yeah. Anyway. Well, you know, <laughs> hey, it is what it is. So apart from the mistakes you've just made twice, tell us about the most common mistakes you've seen other musicians make. Uh, being... <sighs> Being too attached to their 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 comfort zones. Um, there's, there's, you know, getting getting into com- cover bands. You know, you know, people want to see you know cover music done note for note. That's a bit of a trap. I fell into that. I've seen many musicians like you know, if you can't play it note for note, you should just quit or give up or, you know, people won't like it or whatever. This 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 self, you know, negative self talk is really the thing you know people submit to that you need to really kind of put that away because that's that always works against creativity everybody has those those little demons that you know tell you you're no good or or, you know nobody will like it whatever but that's not why you paint your picture and you paint it because you you get joy out of doing that process and you hope others other others get some joy out of out of getting some movement in their spirit out of it you know, you want to take people, it's like time travel. When you hear a great cover song that you, you know, grew up with, like, let's say, uh, She Loves You, for, for example, by the Beatles, you can't help but smile when you hear that song. It's like time travel. It takes you back to the mood that you heard that. But the Beatles wrote that originally. If they'd only ever played cover tunes and, and stayed in the tavern, they never would have been who they are. So at some point, you have to transcend that, that negative self-talk and and just just do it and, and work at, at getting joy out of it and getting better at your craft. I think that's the, the most serious mistake people make. They just play other people's music and they don't try to do their own. 
because it seems easier. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. And I was guilty of the same thing, singing other people's melodies and other And I realized you have to do your own thing. And it's going to take you a while of doing your own thing to figure it out. So don't wait and don't just do covers because, you know, if you look at the voice and all these different, sure, you can make it your own. But at the end of the day, making something out of nothing is far harder than singing someone else's thing. And I think it took me a while to realize that. Yeah, I, I agree. It's pay attention. Like, you know, you, I find myself humming melodies out of nowhere when I'm cutting the grass or wh- whatever I'm doing, like even menial tasks like driving down the road, you'll be humming like the radio isn't on. I just organically music comes from your soul, right? You know, you would have, you know, when you're, when you're so little, you can't remember your mother played fiddler on the roof like my parents did. They always played opera, they played Bach, they played all kinds of music, you know, Elvis, everything. So, so those are down in the DNA somewhere that I'm not even conscious of. But those little those little ideas and things kind of just permeate out in your own music. There is really only you know eight notes. We're not we're not recreating notes, but we're we're you know giving a different presentation to music. Each and every one of us. You know, we're not, we're not stealing other people's music or doing anything like that. That would be disingenuous and. Yeah, it's not what we're on to just kind of let your own creativity flow, right? Absolutely. So, tell us about your website. Where can people buy your stuff, stream it? Okay, uh, www.johndorchmusic.com is uh, the number one place to see everything about me and my music, and um, links to uh, the album streaming is on Spotify, Deezer, and Apple Music. It just uh, was released on July the fourteenth. This is a major triumph for me. So this is my first, I guess, my sophomore album. And um, wanted to make it a good one. So we ended up, instead of 10 songs that I planned on, it was 15 because I can't stop writing. So anyway, and um, so that came down on, on July 14th. So that's up for sale. I have physical CDs here. So if you see me in person, that would I would be more than happy, happy to give you. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, at our performance, I'll be selling them here or I can, you know, the mail, the mail thing. If that gets too uh, too crazy online, I'll have to figure something out. Who's <laughs> sending physical copies? But uh, I, I do have a supply of those online and streaming is probably the best way. Or my YouTube channel, John Dorsch uh, Music YouTube. Um, we've got a bunch of YouTubes up there from you know, Van Halen tributes to Faith in Me, our new new music video that accompanies the um, the, uh, the new lead single, and uh, other acoustic cafe performances. Okay, man, that's uh, that was awesome, and it, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. I want to thank you. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. I I, I really enjoyed my time with you, and I, I thank you and every one of the listeners for for, uh, for for allowing me to be here. Well, thank you so much, John, and to all the listeners out there, thank you for spending a little bit of your time with the two of us. We both hope your unique story gets heard around the world too. My name is Sorantos. Please join me every Tuesday night. To hear other amazing artists share their fascinating stories right here at the Songwriter Show on Reality Radio 101. I love you guys. Have a great night.
It's Valentine's Day today. The world is still round. Where is love? Is it all around? Love is all around today. True love is free. Love. to the songwriter show to keep the momentum going head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists songwriters and producers that's www.songwritershow.com